Startup is Jan Wesserhuis from Robert Bosch Venture Capital. Uh, I actually have Bosch the whole time on my Twitter feed currently with all the news about the Bosch Net World and IOTA there, so I'm looking forward to those news. Um, getting everything set up with the slides and time on there. Perfect. Oh, time is very good. Yeah. So I um, realized there is a, a similar talk going on in the other room. Also about venture capital and he's uh, sick, so don't worry. He's sick. Yeah. Oh darn! I was uh, <laughs> starting to complain that I cannot follow this. But um, so good. Thanks for choosing this room anyway. Um, I used to play American football as a halfback, and uh, that's a sport where you get a lot of contact with other people, and sometimes you just get outright hit by a freight train. You didn't see this coming, the guy was bigger than you, he was faster than you, and by the time you picked yourself up from the ground and the picture started rolling again, coach would be in your face saying, yo, do you want to be the hitter or do you want to be the hitty? And that's exactly what we're talking about here. Do you want to be the disruptor or do you want to be the disruptee? As VCs, we do invest in disruptive business models. That's what we do. That's what we did for the last 60 years. And, and probably, if you look into the history of venture capital, it's going on for a couple of hundred years. So that's nothing new. We've been doing this in semiconductors. We've been doing this in the internet. We've been doing this uh, for AI, autonomous cars, you name it. The model that we use to do this, however, is extremely conservative. So we have our investment memorandums. We have a 10-year lock-in period for our investors. It's a horrible asset class. You can't really get in. You can't really get out. Um, we invest in equity, except for the occasional bridge loan that we might give to companies. So it's, this thing is old school, very old school. Here comes distributed ledger. Here comes ICOs. Now, the disruptive nature of blockchain or distributed ledger, uh, ledger is, is obvious. I mean, but again, this is what we do for a living. So it's, it's another treasure that we find. Um, what is different, though, is that it comes along with a different form of finance that those companies or projects have access to. So suddenly, you have those very young projects. I mean, even our lingo changes, right? Uh, I always said we don't do any project finance, right? We finance companies. Now we're starting to shift our speech here. So those projects get to large amounts of money early on in their lifetime. The investment is highly liquid suddenly. And it's a funny form of asset, right? So, and, and this is what makes it interesting, actually. So let's, uh, let's have a look into this. Um, the amount of money. Well, uh, here I must say, A, what's been going on in the last year and a half was crazy, right? So I do predict some form of mean reversion. This is not going to go on forever. That's one thing. The other thing is that you know, as, as a VC, of course, there's always this guy with more money, deeper pockets um, that you can't compete with. So an ICO might just be one of those animals where if you just have a couple of hundred million under management, you can't do those type of things. It's fine. That's not really the scary part. The more interesting part to me is the liquidity. Because now you are suddenly not locked in to an investment forever. And the question is also, who, who's you? Is it, are we talking about VCs now? Or is it the average John Doe from the street that can suddenly do venture investments? The whole barrier of entry to access this asset class of venture capital has suddenly become significantly lower. Now, if you're 
invested into a, a token in, in uh, contrast to a classical VC investment, you can get out again fairly quickly. You can change the level of assets that you have under management, which is inherently not possible in the classical VC model. And this is going to be very interesting to watch. I mean, it's early days. Uh, we see some very specific uh, crypto funds that are trying to, to uh, try out new things with mixed results. And we see guys like us uh, that come from a very classical VC setup, or even CVC setup in our case, and are trying to adapt to this new form uh, of, of assets. So liquidity is a very, very interesting thing. And the other very interesting and potentially disruptive part for classical VCs is the form of the asset. And I don't want to go down this route of are, are we talking about an asset or is it a currency or how we test, does it need to be regulated? That, that's, of course, we're going to have some regulation and of course uh, this is going to drag on for a while. That's not the concerning part. The, the interesting part is that the classical VC model is built on equity investments. It's the, the whole thing is built around this idea of I own a portion of the company, I can exercise certain rights which are connected with those portions of equity. So all of our term sheets are around voting rights, who sits on the board, who decides what, and so on. To a certain degree, of course, you can also have this in a token itself, but for the time being, our equity-backed investment model just plain does not work anymore, right? So we need to come up with new ways to understand, okay, how can we work with those young projects? How can we as, as absorb this type of risk? Because all our terms in, in the different term sheets backed on the equity model spell control at the end of the day, right? This is the only thing that VCs have to mitigate the risk. Otherwise, you would get bank, bank financing if you had assets, but you don't have assets, right? So we take on enormous amounts of risks, and the only thing, the only thing we get for it for the time being is a little bit of control, okay? This now falls away. Now, with the crazy days that we're in, um, nobody's asking for control. They just wire the money or ether or whatever and uh, hope for the best. Good luck. Been there, done that. We've seen that in the internet, um, in the internet age. Uh, this will also come a little bit to a mean reversion. And by the way, I, I'm a strong believer in, at the end of the day, it is about cash flow, right? Uh, so also the, the metrics that we've uh, seen partly to judge companies. Uh, in the early days of the internet, suddenly it was not about cash flow anymore. It was uh, about clicks per user and, and site referrals and whatnot. And, and then suddenly you had your valuation coming out of this. We see the same thing. Now we uh, look at network value, Metcalfe's law, whatnot, and do crazy things to understand, okay, what is this worth? At the end of the day, you know, in a, in a couple of years, when the craze is a little over, uh, I, I'm, I'm a big believer it's going to come down to, you know, what's the cash flow? But anyway, for the time being, it's, you know, do we see this freight train coming? Do we want to still disrupt as VCs, or are we being disrupted right now. It's, it's a very, very interesting time. This is the first time that we've seen that. We have not seen this with um, crowdfunding projects that's been, uh, that have been very popular a couple of years ago. Uh, that was more in the angels' play, and for us it was great because you know, early projects could get you know, a couple of hundred thousand bucks, maybe a million, maybe two, and when the real money was needed, they were looking at us, right? Now, those times are over, at least in, in crypto. So why, apart from the personal challenge and, and the interest that I do see in A, the technology, and, and B, for us as a business model, why do we as RBBC dabble in this? Um, as, as I said, you know, we are a corporate venture fund from Robert Bosch, um, big German company. We have about 420 million under management, and we invest in 
technologies which are of the broader interest of Bosch, which is predominantly electronics and software. Now, IoT comes into play here, big time. So uh, Bosch is a strong player in, in the whole IoT ecosystem. A simple fact, you know, Bosch is uh, the or one of the two biggest sensor manufacturers of this world, and all of the sensors get connected to the internet, right? And that's the internet of things, simple as that. So we've been active in this for quite uh, some time um, as the big corporation and also as uh, the venture fund. And of course, distributed ledger technologies add a lot to this. I don't have to go into details. I'll just give you uh, one example of what the big company has been doing. There's been a project uh, around um, mileage counters in cars, uh, for example. So the idea was that you know, a lot of times with used cars, mileage counters get reset, you know, physically wound back or, or electronically reset. So the car that you're getting with the 30,000 kilometers on it might have 300,000. Uh, probably not, but 90,000. Huh? Um, how can we prevent this? If you would signal the actual uh, kilometers of the cars to the blockchain and write it into a distributed ledger from time to time, you would be able to get some form of certificate if you want it. And the interesting thing is that you could structure it in a way that only the owner of the car is able to get the certificate and look at it. So he is free to choose. You now, once he sells his car, do I want to download the certificate and prove that the car has got the mileage that I claim this car has? Or do I let it be? Yeah, and that's a, that's a very interesting thing. That's, that's just a, a small project of what Bosch is doing here. And there's many, many other things going on. So as RBBC, we're also front running the, the company a little bit, uh, we must say, uh, because uh, part of the reason why we exist within this Bosch universe is um, that we bring innovative and disruptive technologies to the big company. So we've been looking at <clears throat> Bitcoin in the beginning um, and thought, hmm, this is kind of interesting. Um, it's fintech. We don't do fintech. But actually, if this cuts out the middleman and if you can make transaction costs very low, then suddenly I can monetize on data that has a very low value. right? Let's for example, um, take temperature data of this room or all of Frankfurt. What could you do if you had access to temperature data of all of the temperature sensors in Frankfurt? I'm very sure some smart people com would come up with a tremendous business idea. But the single temperature sensor in your car, in the parking lot right now, how much is that worth? Mm, very little. Right? So you need a very efficient financial system to access this, this type of data and, and make it uh, economically feasible. And, and that is the power that we saw early on in uh, distributed ledger. Now what was missing was the real applications and scalability. And I think this is what fundamentally changed in the last couple of years, starting with Ethereum and smart contracts, which made it a lot more interesting for us. And now, end of last year, we, we did an uh, investment in IOTA, where we think this is one of the more, most <coughs> promising projects out there where, that can solve the scalability problem. Right? So that's been quite a journey, you know, we've been going down the, the rabbit hole, somebody said it before here, uh, so we've had the same thing and it was quite an interesting way also together with Bosch and working with such a, a big industrial giant here. Uh, so the first couple of conversations we had uh, was, uh, you know, there's something interesting going on. We need to look at this. Uh, it's not really within our investment mandate. You know, it's not electronics. It's software somehow. But can we do this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at it. It's, it's interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bitcoin, a third. Yeah, fine. Do, do it. So we started to, you know, go venture down this rabbit hole and it got more serious and more serious. And 
by the day when we said, guys, I, we think we found something, we want to do an investment. Um, yeah, oh, sounds good, IoT, fine, um, do that. We were going like, yeah, but it ain't equity. What do you mean it's not equity? You want to buy Bitcoins, you want to trade on Silk Road or do crazy stuff. We don't do crazy stuff at Bosch. Uh, no, it's not Bitcoin at all. We're not interested in Bitcoin. We, you know, it's a different thing. It's, it's a token. All right, and this is when all hell breaks loose, right? This, this is where people look at you and they're like, what's a token? Why is that different from Bitcoin? And the troops get called in. So we had, um, we had sessions with the economists of Bosch. We had sessions with the IT guys. We had sessions with the tax guys. You know, it's, it's just something where everybody's going like, whoa, I don't know what, what it is. I'm scared, right? The good thing is, you know, th this, this whole space has got so much news and is obviously so attractive that we were able to solve all those things. Um, and it, it was fruitful for both sides. I mean, sometimes we had to go through the motion of educating people within Bosch, but then again, um, we found so many very interesting people who are doing projects, who, who have great ideas, that also for us, uh, as an investor, we got a lot, of, a lot out of this process. So at the end of the day, uh, we did this investment, and then all hell broke loose. <laughs> Actually, for us, it, 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 it's tiny little things, but um, how do you use the, the governance requirements, or how do you adhere to the governance requirements <coughs> that you do have as an investor with a token and with a private key? You know, can you do a four eyes principle? Do we want to go into a multi-sig wallet uh, for some of the parity guys that didn't work out well? So, and, and maybe depending on the, the uh, token you invest in, there isn't nothing like a multi-sig wallet. So do you take the, the seed and cut it in half or whatever? You know, it's, it's, it's a new thing. Then again, where do you keep this stuff? Right? We literally, we, we looked at each other and, and we looked at our little safe in the office where we used to keep those funny, nicely printed US um, equity notes, things that nobody needs, uh, actually, but you need to keep them somewhere, so we have a little tight little safe, put them in there. If somebody steals it, so what? You know, it's somewhere on, it's in a registry anyway. And we looked at this and said, no, we're not gonna keep any keys in this thing, right? So uh, it's, it's really practical issues that somebody hits you as a VC when you say, okay, let's not be disrupted, let's play along here, but you need to figure out what to do. Nothing is unsolvable, but it's really uncharted, uncharted waters. Then also, and uh, that's, that will be an interesting development, I just said <clears throat> token investments are highly liquid. Right? So until now, we as a VC, we invest in a company, we hold the company for three, five years, sometimes seven years, depends on the, on the technology. <coughs> Chip investments tend to be heavy. Now we just invested. There's a press release out. Can we sell it tomorrow? Can we go back in? Yeah, technically, yes. Would it make sense from a pure portfolio management perspective, from an asset management perspective? Yes, it would, but are we allowed to do this? Is this our mandate? No, actually not. So what do we do? Are we, are we being smart or are we being stupid, right? So those are questions which are <coughs> still need to be solved and I think where the venture capital model will evolve over the next couple of years still. So. It's really uncharted waters uh, going where no one's gone before, at least in our little Bosch galaxy here. And um, every time I, I think about it, I, I think I've, I have not seen such a strong and fundamental movement since the internet really conquered the world. This can fundamentally change many things, and it's the first time 
that we're not talking about a Silicon Valley centric development. This does not come out of Silicon Valley. Actually, Main Street Silicon Valley started to wake up quite late to this whole thing. The ecosystem is almost as distributed as the ledger itself. Um, it's a big chance also for, for Europe in this uh, context, I believe. And yeah, every time we uh, go a little further down this rabbit hole and turn the next corner, we're asking ourselves, hey, you know, what are we doing here? Are we being the disruptor or are we actually being the disruptee? Thank you very much for listening.